Good afternoon, and welcome back to Today with Matt and Dave. I'm Matt Ricker. And I'm Dave Horvat. And uh, now the special part of the show, um, our first special guest, uh, Professor Nadine Cosby of the Mass Comm Department here at Iona. Uh, we're pleased to have you. Welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, so Professor Cosby is a writer and director whose works are heavily rooted in the exploration of gender, racial, and cultural rep representation. Sorry, and uh, span across various media, including film, television, and new media. She has over 20 experience of radio, television, and film, working in several capacities at notable media outlets, including Madison Square Garden, Fox 5, Lifetime Television Networks, and Disney and ABC. Professor Cosby established her own freelance business in which she writes, directs, and produces projects for film, television, and the internet. Uh, she's also uh, she also teaches undergraduate courses in broadcast media, and serves as the advisor to ICTV, the college's television club. Her professional associations have included the Producers Guild of America East, African American Women in Cinema, IFP, and the Broadcast Education Association. Just this year, I'm sorry. Just this year, she released a TV movie uh, quote for Brothers, where she acted as the director, producer, and writer. Uh, very impressive. <laughs> she's, done, um, she's done everything. <laughs> yes. Uh, but uh, we uh, wanted to bring her on today to talk about different types of television shows and different types of uh, uh, popular television shows that are currently on uh, TV right now. So I'll start with a few of my favorites. Um, the top one is How to Get Away with Murder. Yes. <laughs> which uh, is on ABC uh, Thursdays at 10 p.m. So I, I mean, it's the second season. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, from the start, it, it was just a great show. What do you, what do you think? Okay. So, uh, and, and full disclaimer, Matt knows that I'm obsessed with this show. <laughs> um, I love the show. You know, what's not to love about it? There's you know, mystery and intrigue and just a whole lot of drama. But the show is also uh, presented in this kind of weird and very creative way, in mm -hmm. kind of a non-linear way. Um, usually the first episode starts with the ending, mm -hmm. and then the show kind of backtracks and walks you through yeah. what happened to lead up to that moment, So, which is really fantastic because over the course of a season, you get the chance to come up with all these uh, ideas and conspiracies and compare it with other people. So we all think we figure <laughs> out what happened. And then when the big reveal comes along, none of us expected what it was. So love the show. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, she, uh, that show has a phenomenal actress, uh, Viola mm -hmm. Davis. Mm -hmm. uh, she is the um, recipient of the uh, Academy Oh, Emmy uh, Award for uh, Emmy Award. Best mm -hmm. okay. Actress in a Drama. Yeah. She's fantastic. Yes. Yeah, thanks thanks for that. I get so confused with all these award shows. <laughs> Lots of like award shows. Up. And we're at right. the time of the year when they're all coming around too. So. Right, right. Uh, you can... uh, I, you know, personally, Matt's always going to tell me how to watch it, and I just don't have time right now. If I had time, I want to watch it because I love Viola Davis. I've loved her in everything she's in. She's yeah. just she's a great actress, and I've just read the reviews are fantastic on it. So I definitely, like I said, probably went, we went to break. When I finally have a little time to decompress, I'll definitely have to watch it, though. Because I tell Matt all, every week just about how he's going to watch The Blacklist. That's, mm -hmm. that's one of my favorite shows. Haven't watched this season yet, but just I've watched from the first two seasons I have seen. I love that show. I love James Spader in it, and he's fantastic. But uh, that and then Modern Family, my other favorite show I like to watch. Yeah, that's a good one. I love Modern Family, and too. You talk about it in class. And yeah. it's, it's funny because... You can't mention my family without mentioning how they just, for the first time in five years, didn't win at the Emmys right. for Best Comedy, which Veep took that, which is the show that uh, Julia Louis dreyfus is in, which I haven't watched because I don't have HBO, but reviews on it say that's it's really funny. I said it's got to be funny if it's beating Modern Family right. out. So, I mean, how do you... How do you uh, have you seen any of those shows? Or I have. I um I do watch Modern Family quite a bit. Love the show, as you know. Um, I do watch Veep, not regularly, just whenever I catch it, whenever mm -hmm. it happens to be on. But it's hysterical. Is it? Okay. It is really funny. Mm -hmm. um, it's a tough show to compare to Modern Family. The two are just so different. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. you know so it's I don't know it's it's almost an unfair comparison they're two really funny shows but very different different funnies um I think though part of Modern Family's loss is really just kind of time you know what I mean I think Mm -hmm. people are like okay it's hilarious we get it but what else is out there yeah, it's been around now. The one season seven or eight. Now. I believe. Yeah, I it's believe it's be, seven. It's, it gotta be at least seven. Yeah. And it's one of those things. How biggest issues for TV shows is after so long. You know, how much? What else can you put that makes it new? Right, especially for a sitcom. Yeah, you know, you can have lots of different plot twists with drama, but for comedy, at what point does it kind of become too over the top? Yeah, you know. So I I. Uh... You know, unfortunately, I don't I don't watch Modern Family anymore uh, because I, you know, I would watch like all the old episodes and then I would watch the current season. So yeah. I kind of I kind of got a little tired of it. Yeah. I, I par- partially did it to myself because I would watch it so much. But, you know, I have to get back on with watching it because I know it's a good show. Oh, well, you have to look yeah. at, I think, with uh, sitcoms after about seven yeah, through seven years. That's that's a healthy number for a sitcom. Right. And, Unless you're making the next Seinfeld, I mean, that's right. going to be the, one of the best ever. It's just seven, eight, you're looking at. Like, one of my favorite shows was uh, uh, How I Met Your Mother. Mm-hmm. Love that show. Yeah. You know, people I don't hate it on the ending. I was okay with the ending, but it was one of those eight years was like, yeah, as a fan, it, I didn't like that it ended, but it was one of those like, okay, it was probably time for it to end. Right, right. Uh, another show uh, that is one of my favorites is, uh, I, I always bring it up in class, uh, Law & Order SVU. Do you watch that? <laughs> so, I did. Yeah. <laughs> and now, I just, it's another one of those shows that I catch it yeah. whenever it's on. Mm-hmm. Strangely enough, I really enjoy the reruns of that yeah. show, you know, because it's evolved so much over the seasons. So, the reruns are really fantastic, and I catch a lot that I hadn't seen. So, I still check it out. It's uh, it's interesting, like uh, watching the older episodes because it's it's uh, and it's seventeen season, uh, so wow. when you forever <laughs> when, when you look at like the computers, right. the, the the phones, uh, you know they didn't have cell phones, right. uh, you know many years ago, and and then uh, just like the cars that you see and right. the, the the quality of the picture of yeah. the, of the uh, actual episode, um, also um, the. Uh, the actress uh, Mariska mm-hmm. Hargitay. Hargitay, yeah, thank you. Um, her new role, she's playing more of a role as uh, director, uh, which is good because um, you know she's a great actress as well. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I can't believe you know she's been on seventeen years. It's a and, long time. And she, she looks a little different too. She does, yeah, <laughs> from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I feel though, if you have a good drama, it can kind of last, and you can watch those reruns and still enjoy it. I mean, mm-hmm. one I like the show castle or something mm-hmm. when i'm home i know on tnt they at least they they will do the run all the way up to the late last season and then they'll start it over again so they do that bones it's one of those things you can watch those older episodes and still enjoy them and right. pick up things you didn't pick up before and actually um mentioning a show that's actually going to end is um i just read to this morning mythbusters is ending after 14 years uh 14 seasons they are calling it quits at the end of this year so it's uh, sad to see that just because growing up with it, that was something I remember watching in science class from third grade beyond. We'd always watch those, right. those little yeah. experiments. They've done over 3,000 of them th- during their run, so it's pretty cool. You know, they, the guys were happy. They were like, you know, we're going to end it our way. We're not right. going to get told that like this is how it's going to end. So it's sad to see it go, but yeah. it's at the same time, it's like, okay, you know, at least they're ending on their note. Very true. I mean, there's something to be said for knowing when it's time to go, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's time to, uh, you know, just come to an end, a nice, happy ending mm-hmm. in terms of wrapping up the show. I like the quote that you used from them. They're ending on their terms instead of just kind of being yanked off the air. Can I just say I didn't know it was still on? I honestly I had either. no idea I it was still it, on. I thought it ended a couple of years ago. And yeah. It's, Same with me. It's one <laughs> yeah. of those I was like, yeah. oh, OK. Right. But I had a question for you, Professor. Because you've worked in television, how is it, because Matt mentions uh, SVU has been on for 17 years, and we talk about the change over it, how has television really evolved over the last 15, 20 years? Okay, um, 
We've seen it evolve a lot, and I think in, in a lot of different ways. In terms of the content, I think we can all identify a huge difference in the content 15, 20 years ago, as opposed to now. Um, images, language, um, the demographic makeup of TV, just pretty much everything in terms of the content has changed a lot. And then um, I think TV is just taking more risks now. Yep. Um, but it's also kind of mimicking society. We've evolved a lot. We're very different um, than 20 years ago. So I think TV is now reflecting that in a lot of different ways. The issues that are hot issues in our society regarding culture, politics, religion, we, um, we always see those issues sooner or later appear on television. So society is definitely, I think, having an impact on what we're seeing on TV. I don't know if anyone's ever seen the show Blackish. It's love that, that show. Is, it, it's, <laughs> I noticed I really didn't watch the first season and it came on after Modern Family yeah. and I was like oh I love Modern Family and these you know same kind of thing watched and I was dying I'm yeah. like, I'm like this is just be, the episode I watched was it was a very controversial um, episode it was just really funny like the little kid got kicked out of school for saying yes, something and yes. I was I remember watching two of my roommates and we're dying yeah. <laughs> just laughing so hard and it was just kind of funny because reflecting society and, absolutely and, different, and it's, it's like television takes these risks but it's like yeah. these big risks big reward right and with these bigger networks i feel like they can take these risks because okay that may not work but we have 15 other shows right. lined up already right absolutely and also because they've built up a following for the shows so even if one episode might be off-putting to some viewers they're not going to quit the show no. altogether no. um that episode i know the one you're talking about it's so such a fun. great example because I mean, just the level of comedy. Oh. I watched that show and I was laughing till tears. But at the same <laughs> time, as funny as it is, it's also realistic. You know what I mean? It's reflecting real life. It's reflecting the conversations parents have to have with their kids. Um, it's reflecting, you know, we know what we listen to on the radio, mm -hmm. right? So being able to, I guess, understand and determine when that's okay. Like, okay, it might be appropriate in this song, but, you know, you don't use it in conversation in certain not in no, school no. at a talent show so that was, you know yeah so yeah. it's just one of those things though like you said as it, it covers like the what, what kids are seeing now kids, right. i've seen younger kids are listening to songs i know like when i was their yeah. age we're not nearly the kids i feel like my my age group we were not exposed to as much at a young right. age where the little kids now it's like they're exposed to songs i'm listening to and i'm like i'm 19 years old you're eight why, my little cousin, I'm right. like, wait, you're listening to that? I'm like, you're, by the time he was, I'm like, you're literally eight years old and you're listening to songs that you should be at least, you know, right. 16, 17 listening to. Right. And, and, they do, and the thing is, they don't understand what these words mean and then they say them and it's like, oh, this is, this is not good now. Now you have to have right. the talk. And uh, another thing is uh, the impact uh, social media has had. Mm -hmm. um, if you uh, look at um, pretty much any, any TV drama or whatever uh, a social network is incorporated within the content, you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, like if uh, going back to Law and Order, you know, that now they're starting to do crimes that have to do with social media. Uh, like something happens and then the videos get posted and then they got to try to track down who posted that. So I think it's interesting. And then if you watch one from 16 years ago, you won't see that. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, that's very yeah. true. And also in a lot of cases, shows are even pulling ideas from things mm -hmm. going on in social media, whatever's trending in social media mm -hmm. and so on. So it plays a huge part <clears throat> right now in, I think, all of media, you mm -hmm. know, in every in every other media form. And, you know, it's contributing to ideas, as Matt mentioned, entire plots around social media, mm -hmm. because that's the reality of our um, of our society today. There's a saying that people um, above a certain age uh, like to say, and one of the best things about social media is that it didn't exist when we were in high school or college. And it really is a reflection of society today mm -hmm. because you guys have cameras on you 24 7 mm -hmm. and you never know who's recording right agree, and yeah. we all know what that means and that's something that older generations didn't have to deal with yeah. so it definitely impacts the way you function mm -hmm. in society in real life and then we're seeing that kind of mimicked on tv as well yeah you know i don't know what i would do without facebook i mean <laughs> uh, if if the internet is down i'm like going crazy i can't check who's liking <laughs> my posts <laughs> yeah um you know that's that's what it's uh, come to but it you know it has its pros and its cons right um 
another uh, another few shows that uh, I want to uh, ask you about. Have you watched Chicago Fire, Chicago PD? So I have. I watched Chicago Fire a few episodes. I'm not going to say I consistently have watched yeah. all of the episodes. It's a good show. I think for me, some of these kind of later shows, um, I just don't have the time to get into, or maybe I deny myself. I don't want to get into a whole new mm -hmm. show because then, you know, you're hooked and it's something and else you have to watch. And then right. it's, just, it's more hours you don't have. Right, in a day. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, it's amazing how uh, Dick Wolf could do Law and mm -hmm. Order, Chicago Fire, Chicago PD, and now there's a new spin off coming, Chicago Med. Oh, wow. Um, and it's, it's going to be, you know, the same idea, but it's going to be in a hospital setting. Right. Um, right. which it's, uh, it's but kind of like kind of yeah. like yeah. what professor Cosby just mentioned before when I, when a you build a following mm -hmm. you can start to take these chances right i guess one question i have for you is just over the last 20 years some of these networks i don't know if it's me i feel like they have some of these shows have a short lease like you look at the end mm -hmm. of the year at least i, I do because i'm weird like this and i like to see what shows are getting renewed i like to look at the demographic wise and what are the numbers coming out and these new shows, you know, September time will release, you know, 10 new shows and mainly renew two of them. But it's like after one episode, they're like, oh, it's done. Let's yeah. cut it. And I've seen some really good shows. I watch and I'm like, these numbers are not the greatest, but they're still very doable. And they cut them and it's like, oh, man, like that was it had so much potential. And it's like they right. just cut the show before it could really like spread its wings and fly. I don't know. Are they doing that more now or are they doing it? Did they do it more maybe 20 years ago? Um, they're definitely doing it more now, but there are a few reasons or maybe one reason that has lots of different layers to it. There's so much content. There's so much to watch. So many shows on television. And then you think about internet TV. You okay. think about Netflix and the idea that they're also now producing their own content. Mm -hmm. So there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of shows that air over the course of a season. And they're all competing for a couple of things. So we know the networks are competing for ratings. But why? What's the purpose of ratings? It's really about advertisers. Mm -hmm. right? So all of these shows are in competition to attract the most advertisers and the highest paid advertisers. The networks really don't have the time to allow a show to air for an entire season before really making a full determination of whether or not it's going to be a moneymaker, be a successful show. Mm -hmm. So they'll try, try out a couple of episodes. If the ratings are really low, they won't continue. Uh, one other sh show that I um, I used to watch it was called uh, Southland. Mm -hmm. uh, it was on TNT. Oh, this was I like that show. Two or yeah. three years ago, I was like, when I heard they were canceling it, yeah. yeah, you know, I was so upset. I mean, I I said that like, what's not to like? But I guess maybe because that that show was was on like years and years right. ago. Um, so maybe I don't know. Maybe the, the ratings were just not there. Um, but yeah, hope maybe one day another network will pick it up. Um, right. Have to just wait and see. That's yeah. true. That's happening now too. We see they've shows brought, get they've canceled, brought show, canceled, and they get brought back. That's right. Down the road on a different network, maybe mm -hmm. that does happen. And uh, another one is uh, American Crime. Uh, yes. That one. Uh, that one. I, I think it's coming back uh, soon. Yeah. Uh, that was that was a good one. Um, although they did drag it out a little bit, but they did keep the viewers engaged. It was. It's a very engaging show. It is coming back for another season. Really good plot and good writing. Um, I think for me personally, it was just almost a little bit too gritty. Mm -hmm. You know. Okay. Yeah. Um, the drama is pretty intense, and some yeah. of those scenarios on the show are pretty intense. Yeah. So while it's really good. Um, you know, sometimes you just want to watch TV to unwind a little bit. Yeah. And especially at the time that show comes on, like 10 o'clock. Yeah. So it's kind of wind down time for me. And that's yeah. the type of show that you can't really sleep no. afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I stopped watching, you know, for that reason. It was almost um, haunting, you know, a little yeah. disturbing. I feel like some of these, like I know for AM, AMC for starters, they like to do a lot of the shows like American Horror Story where it's, it's a series, but each season is its individual own beginning and end. I know they've done that with, um, you had Mob City, then you had uh, uh, Public Public Morals. Mm -hmm. I, I'm playing out his name right now. I love the guy. Edward, Edward Burns. Yes. He's the one who produced it, started it, directed it. And I I don't know. I feel like AMC, that's where they're doing well. Besides, and also they have The Walking Dead, which is just, you know, mega, mega, right. mega hit. That, right. that show's continuing. But I feel like, 
I don't know, uh, shows shows that have seasons that begin and end, but maybe like a series, do those seem to do better? Because you don't really see those. Those are like unique. Right. And I feel like those just sit well with people. Yeah, I think it's just um, trying something new and seeing how audiences respond to it. And I think why we've seen a pattern of success in shows that do that is because they pull together these insane ensemble casts. Yeah. So it really becomes about more fans wanting to see the actors. Yeah, and how Um, they work together. Right. So we'll watch them in any plot or scenario that's created for them. That's why, you know, you take Kathy Bates and she can play a different character every every season and kill it every time. You know, exactly. So we're going to watch because of that more so than the plot itself. American Horror Story is a good example because I, you know, fully committed to like the first three seasons. Yeah. And then last season, the plot didn't really work for me mm-hmm. in spite of how much I love the actors. But you in could the show. step back from it and you're not like you're not understanding right. what's going on. I exactly. know like Wayward, Pl- Wayward Pl- uh, Pines did, is doing yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about Fargo. Someone told me if that's what Fargo is doing. I don't know. I, I right. really never watched Fargo. But that's, a, like, that's supposed to be how like, newer people like, yeah. change up a little bit. But yeah. I don't know, I'll have to just wait and see. It's probably a lot of fun for the actors, too. Every season, you're not, they you're get different. to play you're a different character. You're not getting stuck in the same world. Right. You get to be someone new every time. Exactly. But uh, but uh, thank you very much, Professor Cosby, for coming on air today. Yep, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. It was my pleasure. If I can make a quick plug for those listening. <laughs> Tomorrow at noon, that's Friday at noon, we have this continuation of the uh, professional speaker series that we've been having all semester. We've had great speakers coming from all areas of MassCom talking about how they got their jobs, what they're doing in their jobs, and so on. So that's tomorrow at noon. We have Eric Handler. He's the VP of Communications at Yes Network. So we're probably going to have a packed house tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Come on over at noon to hear him speak, and he takes direct questions from the audience. So great opportunity to bring your professional questions. I'm looking forward to it. I'll be there. I will also be there. Great. <laughs> Um, All right. Well, thank you again, Professor Cosby, and uh, we hope uh, you come back soon. Definitely. Anytime. This is always fun. Thanks, guys. Thank you. And uh, that's it for today with Matt and Dave, show number eight. I'm Matt Ricker. And I'm Dave Horvath. And uh, we'll see you next time. Have a great weekend. Adios.